Hello, I'm Admiral Rachel Levine. This Black History Month, I'm pleased to partner with OMH in advancing better health through better understanding for black communities. I'm a body girl in a body world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. No, black people don't want your advice on mental health, no. Go to IKnowGodMerch.com and put in code JOHN316 and receive 20% off for a limited time. Come on, put something in the shopping cart. Help a brother out. Welcome to Disturbing the Peace with Pastor John Amanchukwu. Well, it's still what I call Black Mystery Month. And I call it a mystery because it is a mystery. It's a shame. It's a travesty what has happened to Black America. And much of what has happened to black America can be laid at the feet of the Democrat Party. But that's another topic for another day. Now, about this individual in this video who takes it upon uh, itself, it, okay? Uh, this is Richard Levine. Goes by Rachel Levine. But it has the audacity of telling black people that there's a mental health crisis because of climate change. Now, if that is not the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. How can a person who looks in the mirror and sees the opposite sex have the audacity to tell blacks that they're dealing with a mental health crisis? Crisis. This doesn't make sense at all. Listen, Richard Levine, I call him not Rachel, not Rachel Levine, became the highest ranking openly transgender government official in the United States history when the bio says she, he was confirmed by the Senate as the 17th Assistant Secretary for Health in March 2021. The bio says her, but his clinical and public health work has helped people dealing with a range of medical issues, including eating disorders, the opioid crisis, and COVID-19. Levine was born on October 28, 1957, to parents Melvin and Lillian Levine. He was assigned male at birth. The bio says she was assigned male at birth. I, I mean, this, I just, let me just, let me just wipe my eye right quick. Because this is, this is, this is just so sad. This is so sad that this, that this person, this individual is just lying like this. No goodness world that it was born a male. It says she was assigned male at birth. That's not true. The mental health crisis that we should address today as it relates to this person ought to be what's going on between Richard's ears. Not so much what's going on with blacks and climate change. That's just a farce in the first place. You know, when you talk about climate change, according to McKenzie.com, it says devastating wildfires, brutal heat, intense hurricanes, and extreme flooding. As a result of climate change, we've seen an increase in the frequency, severity, severity, and intensity of hazardous weather across the United States. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration estimates that between 2018 and 2022, the United States experienced 90 disasters with losses exceeding $1 billion each and total cost exceeding $621 billion. 48% increase in the number of disasters per year and a 37% increase in costs from the preceding decade. So far... 2023 is proving to be the costliest year yet when it comes to weather 
disasters. So because of these weather disasters and these fires, these wildfires, these th they're now linking this to the impact that it can have upon the black community. Impacts of climate change, such as property value damage, loss of labor productivity, health problems due to prolonged exposure to heat or lack of clean water and air, and temporary or permanent displacement when a residence becomes uninhibited uninhabitable can put the prospect of black socioeconomic mobility in the United States at greater risk. Just listen to that. Let me say that again. The impacts of climate change, such as property value damage, loss of labor productivity, health problems due to prolonged exposure to heat or lack of clean water and air as if it just got hot yesterday, as if it hasn't been hot in America. They will lead you to believe that climate change has something to do with mental health. It has nothing to do with mental health. What this is, this is a failed attempt for the transgender community to now push upon black America a mental crisis that they are having. So in order to normalize the mental crisis of transgenderism, they must now label blacks as having a mental crisis as well. And do it during and do it during what is called what I call Black Mystery Month or what some call Black History Month. That's the plan. That's the goal. Let's now make the mental illness of transgenderism normal. Let's sanitize it by saying that black people are having mental health problems as well. Now, I don't understand why many of your leading voices, people like Joy Reid, people who get on these talk shows, talk about uh, issues pertaining to black America, all of these race baiters and race hustlers, they have no issue with problems like this. They're not going to touch or this issue with a 10-foot pole. They're not going to address it. Why? Because it's a white, liberal man who thinks that he's a woman talking about black America and they say nothing about it. Take a look at this footage. Climate change is having a disproportionate effect on the physical and mental health of black communities. How dare you? How dare you, Richard? Climate change is having a negative impact upon black Americans. How, how dare dare you? How low down can you be? I hear what you're trying to do. You want to link us to the mental health issue that you're contending with as it relates to gender dysphoria. You are low down, low down. Climate change has nothing to do with what's going on as it relates to black America and their mental health, climate change has nothing to do with that. The mental health problem that's taking place in this country is gender dysphoria, not because of climate change. It's people like you who hide behind trying to become a protected class, keeping people from addressing the big lie of this term called gender, which there's no such thing as gender in the first place. It's sex. There are only two sexes, male and female. Richard. Play the footage. Black Americans are more likely than white Americans to live in areas and housing that increase their susceptibility to climate related health issues. And 65% of black See, Americans I heard that too. feeling anxious about climate so, change. What he's saying is, you know, since there's some socioeconomic challenges in the black community, in other words, blacks are poor. Since blacks are poor, they're more susceptible to the impact of climate change, leading them to be more inclined to have a mental health crisis. 
There are white people who live in the projects. Hispanics who live in the projects. Asians who live in the projects. Go up to New York. Every community, every community, every demographic has a group of people who live in, in what is called impoverished communities. Where is their post? Where is their video from the OMH? Hi, I am Rachel Levine. Where's their video? I don't see one. I don't see one. Blacks have become an easy target and an easy puppet that can be dangled at any time and linked to the crisis of gender dysphoria in our country. And people sit back and say nothing. What a travesty. Play the footage. Through our Office of Climate Change and Health Equity and the Office of Environmental Justice, we're working with providers and community leaders to identify innovative approaches that empower communities to address Let me the health this. consequences linked to climate change. What is environmental justice? You, uh, you know what? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me type this in. Environmental justice. What, what, what is that? All right. Here it is. Enviro environmental justice. It's called EJ. <laughs> EJ is based on the principle that all people have a right to be protected from environmental pollution and to live in and enjoy a clean and health healthful environment. That's EJ. EJ. All people have a right to be protected from environmental pollution and to live in and enjoy a clean and healthful environment. EJ. We've gone from social justice to environmental environmental justice as if EJ is truly what they're trying to get at in the first place. EJ in this case is another ploy in their plan. Let's talk about the mental health crisis of blacks. Let's talk about social justice. Let's talk about critical race theory. Let's talk about intersectionality, different levels of oppression. Now let's talk about EJ, environmental justice. Well, at the same time, we are really trying to set things up so we can become a protected class and, you know, um, make it normal for students to learn about transgenderism and to be lied to at school. We must find a community that we can easily diminish. Hmm, let's use black people. Because by and large, black people vote for the Democrat Party. Even when we say negative things about them, they're not smart enough to read between the lines and know what we're saying about them. Let's just call it EJ. Because if you put justice at the end of it, it just makes it more sexy like reproductive justice. That's where we kill babies in the name of justice because it's got to be right to crush a baby's skull, to rip off the limbs of a child, to cause that child to burn alive in its mother's womb and to suffocate. Oh, it's got to be acceptable if we put justice at the end of it. Because things are just, just because we attach justice to it. Listen to this. Visit hhs.gov for more information and tune in next Thursday to hear from another HHS leader on how you can contribute to advancing better health for black communities. And so next week, they're going to bring on another individual to convince blacks that there's something wrong with us and we're being defrauded and we need justice. 
even if it, even if it's environmental justice. Convince blacks of these things, and we'll bring on another person next week, and next week, and the next week after that, with the intent of making blacks think that we've done something to help them during Black History Month, and we have improved the plight of blacks, while at the same time diminishing blacks, using us as the stool as we prop up transgenderism. I'm not buying it. What about you? Post your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think. You stayed around and watched this video. Please stick around and watch another one. Thank you.